Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is a, indeed a pleasure to be addressing you here at the opening of the conference. Um, welcome to Malta and to the 2014 Mediterranean Energy Conference, which is being hosted by the Government of Malta, together with the Republic of Cyprus and the European Commission. I am honoured that we will today and tomorrow bring together representatives from the European Union, as well as our neighbouring states here in Malta, as well as representatives from the European Commission to discuss developments in the European uh, Mediterranean region. And we are also pleased to have with us a number of stakeholders from various international companies and organisations. It is indeed a pleasure to see the fruition of a year's work of close cooperation between my two esteemed co colleagues, Vice President Gunther Ottinger from the European Commission and Minister George Lacan-Tropis uh, from Cyprus in charting a way forward towards enhanced Euro-Mediterranean cooperation in the field of natural gas. For the benefit of its union, its neighbouring countries and their respective citizens and economies. One may ask why hold it here in Malta. We have decided to host this conference in Malta for a number of reasons. The fact that such a powerful group has gathered here shows the seriousness with which we take the future of Europe's energy supply. Our position in the heart of the Mediterranean with strong links to the European Union and North Africa and the region makes us perfectly placed to take a leading role together with Cyprus in all of this. As you probably have seen in your in-flight entertainment video, um, on the way to Malta, we are pretty much in the center of the Med. We're 60 mile, miles south of Italy, 90 miles um, essentially north of Libya, North Africa, right in the middle of the Mediterranean shipping routes. In fact, Malta is approximately six miles away from the main shipping routes in the Med. Um, yes, we are a small country, just like Cyprus, but we are very dynamic outward looking and very confident about our future. While Malta has a strategic position when it comes to energy security, Malta is a small and isolated energy system to date. We never had the luxury to be complacent when it comes to energy security. Whilst the sustainability of our energy mix requires a great degree of resourcefulness, especially when it comes to energy affordability, which is a priority, um, to essentially uh, benefit our economies. In this regard, we are well familiar in relative terms with energy security syndrome that is becoming ever more apparent as a result of geopolitical um, realities which are surrounding us. Securing our future energy supply is much more than lower prices at the petrol pump. It leads to lower costs of doing business. It improves competition and reduces pollution. It leads to lower bills for our businesses and families, in short, a good energy policy for Europe benefits everyone. And Europe is confronted with a straightforward choice. Act now and get the infrastructure and investment needed in place or get left, left behind. That is a straightforward choice we're facing. Globalization means that capital flows around the world faster than ever before. And if we aren't ready to seize the moment, there will be somebody else in Asia or South America or elsewhere who will do this. Vice President Gunther Oppinger, who shall be joining us later today during the conference, is currently doing a very important work um, at a trilateral level with the CEOs of Gazprom and Naftogaz from the Ukraine and the respective ministers, Minister Novak from the Russian Federation and Minister Prodan from the Ukraine. The Vice President's effort in bringing together Russian and Ukrainian partners to prevent gas supply stoppages is testament to the Commission's resolve but also a case in point of how complex and interrelated geopolitical activities and events are with respect to energy security in the region and how they affect our daily lives. The EU's heads of states or governments reacted to this matter by giving clear direction on March 2014 during the European Council. Europe must diversify its routes, sources and supply of energy. Look at the Mediterranean's potential in attaining all of this diversification. The opportunity is staring us in the eyes. The Medis here has gas reserves. It has resources which have been as yet untapped. In this regard, and in setting out a target for a clear deliverable, the European Council asked the European Commission for a European energy security strategy. 
This strategy has been published and calls for enhanced Euro-Mediterranean cooperation on both political and commercial terms and subsequently the setting up of a Mediterranean gas hub in the southern Mediterranean. Which is why I am so excited to see you here today, ladies and gentlemen, and to hear from those of you from business, eminent professors from academia, as far as the United States, and our friends from Europe and North Africa, Asia, the Caucasus, and the Middle East. We want to learn your point of view and your perspective, and to discuss how we can actually help each other out. So that is what brings us here this afternoon to figure out how to exploit the potential of natural gas, the cleanest, cheapest, smartest source of energy we have on our doorstep. Or perhaps I should say buried beneath our doorsteps. Properly exploited and responsibly regulated, natural gas can offer the Mediterranean and the rest of Europe a safe and stable energy solution. Not only for power generation, not only for, um, the, uh, for, for general economic use, but also for transportation. And in the future, we will see the use of LNG and further gas as well in the transport industry and in the maritime industry too. The people in this room don't tell me. To, um, the people in this room don't need me to tell them that near perfect combustion means that natural gas causes only a tiny fraction of emissions compared to coal or other fossil fuels. And while renewable energy sources become gradually more affordable, and we're pushing that all the time, gas is a well, nat well a natural choice for an efficient and effective transition fuel to power us through the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen. We are fortunate to have amongst us world-class names whose presentations can help us understand really and truly the role of gas developments in the Mediterranean region for enhanced energy security for the Union, the European Union, and for our neighboring partners. We need to set aims, identify drivers for change, and explore opportunities that exist in the region. We do intend to build on this stance via political sessions that the EU, neighboring energy ministers and country representatives will have tomorrow morning. The Government of Malta and the European Commission have put together and produced a paper which expands on the energy, on the Mediterranean component of the energy security strategy for the Mediterranean. We are looking at commercial, volume and transportation aspects of natural gas in the region and beyond. We are also looking at how a genuine, consistent and robust Euro-Mediterranean gas platform, similar to what we have in Northern Europe, similar to what we have in the US, such as the Henry Hub, can um, essentially give life to a Mediterranean gas hub. The paper, which we'll be discussing tomorrow morning with our fellow ministers and representatives, explores the different forms that such a hub could be molded into. This can only happen if we work much closer together. What I want to see out of this illustrious gathering, what I want to see from you, is a new partnership to fast track the development of this exciting energy source. The advantage of a small country like ours and Cyprus is that we can move quickly to get things done. And by working together, yes, we can deliver real outcomes for our peoples. We look forward to working together with the ministers, the European Commission, to follow the track of the Greek presidency. We've got the Greek minister present, present here. Thank you for the groundwork which you've set at the European Council. And we also look forward to work together with the Italian presidency and the Italian ministry to actually take this to the next level, hopefully uh, at the gathering which will be held next November. I do believe that with your participation, the Commission's vision, and by building on the good work done by our partners, such as the Union for the Mediterranean, which is present today, as well as the Jordanian co-presidency, the Minister from Jordan is here as well, we can effectively highlight the true potential of the role that gas developments in the Mediterranean play in both the European Union and its in neighbouring, um, our neighbours, essentially, energy security. It is with such educated know-how that we can exploit and chart the way forward towards effective partnership in harnessing the role of gas development in the region for a robust, consistent and long-term Euro-Mediterranean energy strategy. So thank you for coming here to Malta, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to working uh, with you over the next few years uh, and, and on charting out this course together with the European Commission, the Member States and our colleagues from Cyprus. I hope that, like me, you will see today as the start of a lasting cooperation which benefits us all.
welcome to more time. Thank you so much for hearing me.